Last week, we read about the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead, and we will read the same story again today. We have three lessons, uh, three stories in scripture about the sisters Mary and Martha, and this series is focusing on them, sister faith, I'm calling it because we're looking at the faith of these two women and their interactions with Jesus and what we learn from these three stories. Uh, But we're doing four lessons from three stories. So one needed to be doubled up, and that's this one. We could take many lessons from the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. We'll limit ourselves uh, to two in this series. Lazarus, of course, was the brother of Mary and Martha. And last week we considered the disappointment that Mary and Martha must have felt when Jesus didn't come in time to heal their brother Lazarus uh, in his sickness, and then Lazarus died. And we talked about how we should respond when we are disappointed with Jesus or with God. Today I want to focus on the meaning of just one verse in this story. It's the shortest verse in the story. It's one of the shortest verses in the whole Bible. So see if you can spot it as we read the story together. We'll read the whole thing. See if you can spot that shortest verse, okay? John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. That's the story we'll read next week. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, A short while ago the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you were going back? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death. But his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again at the re- in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out. 
They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out, called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. The story of the resurrection of Lazarus. One of Jesus' greatest miracles. Did you catch the shortest verse in the story? Jesus wept. Verse 35, Jesus wept. In English, just two words. In Greek, it's actually three words. The Jesus wept. They talk funny in Greek. (laughs) The Jesus wept. Question. Why did Jesus weep? Why did he weep? That moment is a turning point in this story. Jesus comes with his disciples to be there with Martha and Mary. He knows Lazarus is dead. He reminds Martha that one day God will raise the dead to life again. But then suddenly there are tears. Tears that are a window into Jesus' heart. Why did Jesus weep? Well, the most obvious answer seems to be that his dear friend Lazarus had died. It seems like good enough reason to weep. Jesus is filled with sorrow. He just lost a dear friend. Now, that was why Mary and the Jews with her were weeping. In verse 34, Jesus asks where they've put Lazarus' body, and maybe all of a sudden the reality of the moment hits him the way our loss of a loved one might not quite seem real until something triggers our emotions and then all of a sudden they come gushing out. Maybe Jesus wept because this friend he loved had died. But somehow that doesn't seem right. Because why would Jesus weep when he knew he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead? In verse 4, he says, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. He says that because he knows it will end in resurrection. In verse 11, he tells his disciples, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. He could have strolled confidently to Lazarus' tomb, commanded the dead man to come back to life, and never shed a tear. Why... Did he weep? Maybe he wept out of sympathy for Martha and Mary and their family and friends who were grieving that day. Verse 33 says, When Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Then he asks where they've laid Lazarus, And then he weeps with them. In Greek, the word that John uses for their weeping means loud wailing. They are crying. They are vocal. 
They are very upset. But for Jesus weeping, John uses a word that in Greek means a quieter weeping. Tears, sorrow, but not so loud. Still filled with deep emotion. Maybe Jesus wept out of sympathy for Lazarus' sisters and the people with them. But again, that seems a little odd because he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead. Why not instead say, hey, cheer up! Look here at the power of God to restore all your joy and then command Lazarus to come out and raise him from the dead. But if Jesus weeps here out of sympathy for Mary and Martha and their family and friends who have lost this man who is so dear to them, when he knows he's about to raise him from the dead, then we learn something about Jesus' character. Even though he is about to raise Lazarus from the dead, He is not calloused to their grief. And our God is not calloused to our pain when we're hurting. Even though Jesus knows he is about to raise Lazarus back to life, he joins these people he loves in their moment of sorrow. He is not ashamed to take upon himself some of their grief. He weeps with them. Not the loud wailing that he's hearing around him, but tears of genuine sorrow. Jesus, as he said, and the resurrection of Lazarus proved it, is the resurrection and the life. Life comes from him. Life from the dead comes from him. As, John, uh, as Jesus says in John chapter 5, verse 25, A time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. And it actually happens with Lazarus. It's sort of a preview of the great resurrection when Jesus will cry out and all the dead will rise to life, both the wicked and the righteous. And all will stand before him for judgment and his faithful people will live forever. Even so, When we lose someone who is dear to us, Jesus understands our grief. And he grieves with us. Yes, he will raise the dead. But he still hurts and grieves with us in the meantime. Somehow it's helpful to know that. It comforts us to know that Jesus shares in our pain. See how he loved him, the Jews said in verse 36 when they saw Jesus' tears. Jesus is not ashamed to weep with us. His sympathy alone is plenty of reason for Jesus to weep as they take him to the tomb of Lazarus. But could there be more reason? I ask because of a little quirk in what John writes in verse 33. Most of our English translations in that spot say something like what I read a minute ago out of the New International Version. When Jesus saw Mary weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. But the Greek word that is translated there, deeply moved, means more than just getting emotional. Usually in Greek from that time, it's a word that was associated with horses. They'd use it for the snorting of horses. You know that sound they make when they're irritated? Kind of a... And we have, a, we have a feeling that goes along with that that's kind of hard to describe in English. Um, in, in Greek at that time, that word, when applied to humans, uh, usually meant anger or indignation. So it's that feeling that this situation isn't right. And that frustration inside us turns into anger because things are not the way they're supposed to be. And so the Holman Christian Standard Bible, which is a really good uh, translation, says Jesus was angry in his spirit and deeply Moved. He wasn't only grieving. He's somewhere between deeply moved and angry. He was upset. Why? Why would Jesus be upset here? Well, some people have said he was upset because 
he saw all these Jews around Mary weeping and wailing, and, and they were insincere. See, it was the Jewish custom at the time that even the poorest families, when they lost a loved one, would hire two flute players and a wailing woman to give voice to their grief. And a wealthy family might hire more. And we have some indication in the stories of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus that there may have been people of some means. So there could have been several people they hired to do the wailing, the, the traditional customary wailing. So maybe the show they put on for pay with all these people around them hurting made Jesus angry. But there's nothing in the text that suggests that anyone there with Martha and Mary that day was insincere. Professional wailers, even if they were getting paid, gave voice to the genuine grief of the family. And Mary and the Jews with her, as they wept, were certainly sincere in their sorrow over Lazarus. Why did Jesus weep? And why was he somewhere between deeply moved and angry? What was it about this moment as they led him to Lazarus' tomb that caused him to be troubled inside and caused tears to stream from his eyes? Sympathy, yes, but could there have been more? Some people have said Jesus was upset with the unbelief all around him. Here he was, the resurrection and the life, the Son of God, as Martha acknowledged, and no one could believe at that moment that he could bring this dead man back to life. Nobody came up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you think you could, you know. Earlier in his ministry, according to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus had brought back to life a young man and a 12-year-old girl. But of course, in their cases, they had just died maybe minutes or hours before Jesus brought them back from the dead. Lazarus, he's in a different situation. He's been in the tomb four days. As Martha, ever the practical thinker, points out, by this time there is a bad odor. To bring back a person whose body is already decomposing Maybe no one imagined that even Jesus could accomplish that. And so Martha, at least, believes that God will one day raise the dead and her brother will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus has power to bring the dead to life. His disciples have seen him do it. Yet he looks around and all these people are grieving and wailing as if they'll never see Lazarus again. You know that feeling? You've lost loved ones too. There's a finality to death that crushes our hearts. But in the kingdom of God, we know that death does not get the last word. So perhaps Jesus is angry with these people for having so little faith, for not being able to see past death to God's power to grant eternal life. Or, maybe that's still not the key here. Because Jesus doesn't rebuke Mary or the people for weeping. He doesn't rebuke them for a lack of faith. Once Jesus himself comes back from the dead, his followers will realize that God really does have ultimate power over death. He can and will raise all the dead back to life. He can grant eternal life. And so the Apostle Paul will be able to write in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 that we do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we know that God raised Jesus from the dead and will raise back to life all who have fallen asleep in him. For the Christian, death is only sleep until God wakes us up again. It's temporary. 
That's why Jesus said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going to wake him up. But at this time, it's too early for Mary and Martha and their fellow Jews to understand all this. Why did Jesus weep? And what made him so upset as he went with Mary and Martha to the tomb of Lazarus? Well, there's one more possibility. Maybe more than that, but we'll just cover one more. Perhaps Jesus was grieved and angry over the tragedy of death itself. Remember the story of how death entered into human existence. Adam and Eve, the first human beings, were created to live and never die. But God warned Adam that if he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he would certainly die. To eat from that tree was to defy the authority of God and to sin against him. That story is in Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve both ate from the forbidden fruit of that tree. And it changed them. And now they stood against God. They had defied his command. And God would not let people sin against him and do evil and live forever. God will not let evil go on for all time. He lets it go on for a while. But then he will bring it to an end. And so ever since that time, as the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. Death is part of our existence because of human sin. And what does death do? It ends life. It brings tragedy into God's excellent creation. It scares and intimidates us. It strips away our hope, our joy, our sense of purpose. Jesus looked around at Mary and Martha and the others with them and he felt their sorrow. And even as he wept with them, he was angry, I think, over what death does to human life. Death was never God's plan for the people he created. It was necessary in order to teach us not to sin. But it was never God's final plan. In fact, Hebrews 2, verses 14 and 15, says Jesus shared in our humanity, the Son of God became human, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. What the writer is saying is Jesus became human in order to die so that by his own death he could destroy from the inside the devil's power to enslave us with the fear of death. Because since Jesus was raised, we don't fear death the same way anymore. We still don't like it much, but the fear that that it it used that the devil used to control us just isn't the same anymore. The devil, the same serpent who deceived Eve and got her and Adam to eat the forbidden fruit so that they would die, wields the power of death so that he can enslave us to himself through our fear of death and keep us from finding life in God. But Jesus came to break his power. And he did it at the cross where he gave his life for us. And at the empty tomb where God raised him from the dead and triumphed over the power of death forever. At Lazarus' tomb, Jesus was angry and heartbroken by the terrible power of death over our lives. He saw the pain it causes. He felt the heartache it leaves behind. He wept with his dear friends who felt it sting the most. Yet even then, At that moment, he was preparing to take away its sting forever. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 52 to 55, tells us that one day, in a flash, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed from mortal to immortal, given new bodies in an instant that can never die. 
And at that moment, the saying written in Scripture will come true. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? It will be gone forever, swallowed up in eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26, says the last enemy of God to be destroyed is death. And Revelation 20, verse 14, pictures death itself as being thrown into the lake of fire that is hell. It will be destroyed forever. Now that's hard for us to imagine existence without death because we've never known life without death. But the resurrection of Lazarus and then far more the resurrection of Jesus prove that God can overpower even the power of death. God instituted death, but only for a time, and he can take it away. So, Jesus wept at Lazarus' tomb. Why? Well, because he shared the grief of Mary and Martha and their friends, even though he knew he was about to raise Lazarus back to life. And he wept and was angry, deeply moved, upset, indignant, because he knew how hard death is on us. How terrible is its sting for now. How much hurt and fear it brings into our lives. And in his profound love for us, he hated what death does to us. To Mary, to Martha, to Lazarus, to you, to me. And a few weeks after he raised Lazarus to life, Jesus laid down his own life so that by the power of God, he could rise up out of the tomb and destroy the power of death forever. So now, if we believe that Jesus rose from the dead and lives forever, in the presence of God. If we believe he weeps when we grieve, but he also took up his weapons like a mighty and furious warrior and overpowered our great enemy that is death and gave death its final death blow, then we have a decision to make. And it's like the decision Martha had to make right there at her brother's tomb. There at the tomb, Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha probably thought he wanted to go inside the tomb and see the body, pay his last respects. So she said, But Lord, by this time there's a bad odor. He's been there four days. Jesus answered, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And then, I bet she began to understand. She began to sense that Jesus was offering to do what no one could even hope for. And she had to decide what she believed. Did she really believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life right now? She did. And she trusted Jesus. And so they took away the stone. Jesus called the dead man back to life. And Martha and Mary received their brother Lazarus back alive and whole again. What do you believe about Jesus? Why do you think he wept? with Mary as they went together to Lazarus' tomb. Do you believe God raised Jesus from the dead? Do you believe there is such a thing as eternal life? Do you believe Jesus came and broke the power of death in our lives, the power of the devil, so that he could set us free to live for God? If we believe in Jesus then we have a decision to make. A decision to trust him. To live by faith in Jesus. To trust him like Martha did, believing that he will raise the dead one day. He will speak 
and the dead will hear his voice and come to life. Living so that when he does this, we may receive eternal life from him. In this hope, we trust Jesus. We trust our God. In this hope, we take comfort even when we grieve. In this hope, we take away the heavy stone of despair and we look to Jesus to speak life into our hearts again and again. In this hope, we live every day for God until Jesus comes again. May God bless you today. Let's pray. We thank you, God, our good Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you feel our hurt when we grieve, that you are not ashamed of that, but you join us in it because you know through Jesus the burden that, that death and the, the difficulties of life uh, place upon us. You know how heavy those burdens are. Thank you for sending Jesus to walk with us and to share those burdens with us. We thank you for your kindness as you comfort us, when you give us peace, when you lift some of our loads so that it's so that it won't weigh us down too much. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, who in his deep love for us, gave his life for us on the cross, and then broke the power of death. You set him free. You brought him out of the grave alive, never to die again. No more can death control him ever. And you have promised us in eternal life bodies like Jesus' resurrected body. Bodies that cannot be controlled by death anymore. Lord, how we long for the day when Jesus will come again and our enemy death will be taken away forever. Until then, help us, Lord, to walk in faith, to trust you, and to see through the resurrection of Lazarus and all the more through the resurrection of Jesus, the resurrection that is yet to come when you will raise all the dead to life and your people will receive eternal life. Lead us to that day, O God. Help us as we walk with you until then. In Jesus' name, amen.